So yesterday, the app Triller, who had exclusive rights to stream the Jake Paul and Ben Askren fight, put out a press release in regards to piracy and illegally rebroadcasting the event. But what's interesting about this press release is their specific mention of one creator, that creator being Ethan Klein of the H3 podcast. The statement shared with us reads out, Triller filed legal action on April 23rd in U.S. District Court of Central California against the owners of the H3 podcast website for piracy of the April 17th event and a dozen other sites that restreamed and profited from as many as hundreds of thousands of users each. More than 2 million illegal streams of the event occurred for the Jake Paul vs. Ben Askren boxing match. In the case of H3 Podcast, Triller added to the site to its legal action after the site's owner admitted on his own podcast that he pirated and shared the Paul vs. Askren fight. The legal action could result in civil fines up to $150,000 per illegal stream, as well as potentially $250,000 in criminal fines and up to 5 years in jail. The fines are calculated at $150,000 $150,000 per instant. So for H3 and other sites who rebroadcast the event to many people, the damages are large. And for reference, H3's podcast where he showed the fight ended up gaining over 1 million views and still climbing. So needless to say, that's a lot of money. Anyways, Ethan Klein responded to this by saying, Apparently I'm being sued by Triller? News to me, especially considering I did not rebroadcast it or pirate it. What? So after this tweet came out, many fans and critics of H3 ended up posting clips from his podcast where he does say that he pirated it. <laughs> but I you don't know. know why the ref called it. I just found that the obscene. I, you know what? Like, I waited I thought, so I felt that way. fucking long for that. You watched? I watched the whole, I, oh. I bootlegged it. I pirated it. <laughs> 1.5 million pay-per-view orders. I didn't pay for that shit. I almost did, but Ian came through with the link. Daddy. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you gonna play cool? You didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything. Ian, you sent me the link. Come on, I'm you doing. had like backups on backups and backups. I was like, this that one's not working. Me. I'm gonna buy it. You're like, hold strong. You sent me don't one that worked. Don't me. So since he was caught in such a clearly checkable lie, he ended up removing that tweet. Now considering how big of a mistake that was, you would think that Ethan's revised response to this would be more careful and truthful. And luckily we didn't have to wait that long for the revision, as today Philip DeFranco uploaded a video on the story, and this is what he had to say. I also reached out to Ethan Klein to see if he had any response or comment to all of this that's happening. And here he gave me the statement, I did not want to support a credibly accused rapist, but I did not broadcast the link, only watch what was readily available. And adding, I didn't host anything. So in his statement to Philip DeFranco, Ethan Klein says, I did not broadcast the link, only watched what was readily available. Wow, Ethan, great moves. Keep it up. Yeah, I really don't think that statement holds up. You can clearly see the link in full view in a high enough resolution to see every single character to retype in yourself. And that video that is shown is not footage that is readily available. Obviously, there's clips of the knockout on Twitter and other platforms from official sources, which are illegal to rebroadcast. But most of this almost 14 minute footage is content that is supposed to be exclusively behind the paywall that trailer has up to watch the fight. So saying that this was footage readily available to the non-paying public is just wrong and even though Ethan Klein didn't show the entire 14 minute video uploaded by his employee Zach he did share the link in full view giving anybody who watched his video access to view the 14 minutes of footage now luckily for him the highest view count we know of for the 14 minute video is 21 views and since this controversy he has privated that video so maybe Ethan will only have to pay out three million dollars rather than the impossible number that would have been conceived from counting a million views worth of piracy fines. But either way, this does not look good for Ethan Klein, especially considering that he continues to lie when addressing the situation. You can't even dismiss Ethan's comments on his podcast as being a joke, and the reality being that he paid for the fight but doesn't want to admit it. Because in his statement to Philip DeFranco, he literally said he doesn't want to support a credibly accused R word. But in his deleted tweet, he said he didn't pirate it. So not only is he lying according to the proof we have, but he's also contradicting himself. Which brings up the question, was this tweet deleted because Ethan genuinely forgot that he pirated the Jake Paul fight because he doesn't want to support someone who he says has been credibly accused of SA? Or did he tweet this out because he forgot that his lie was checkable from him saying he already pirated the fight on his podcast? Regardless of which one it is, the fact that we haven't had a public statement from Ethan own social media page since to at the very least address the mistake he made in his last tweet shows
shows that there isn't nearly enough transparency coming from his side. But despite my disappointment in him addressing this so far, I do think this situation is very unfortunate. I don't ever like seeing content creators get targeted by copyright in this way, but at the same time, it's hard to be sympathetic towards him just because of how easily avoidable it was. He could have talked about the fight without showing any of the footage like many other YouTubers have. He could have showed the publicly available footage like I did in my video instead of having his employee re-upload footage that's supposed to be behind a paywall for him to then show on his podcast, or he could have not mentioned that he pirated it at all. And then trying to lie about it twice publicly, whether intentional or not, is just so stupid. And that's not even mentioning the fact that he's covered the Jake Paul allegations, which that's nothing new. A lot of channels, including myself, have done this, but it does give Triller and Jake Paul more motivation to target you specifically, especially when you're one of the biggest channels talking about it. So with that in mind, to even entertain the idea of showing Jake Paul's pay-per-view content, let alone go through with it is just baffling to me. Not that the reason for pirating it was completely unjustified. There are serious allegations against Jake Paul that have not been thoroughly debunked. And as the information on that stands right now, I think it's perfectly reasonable to think there's a chance that Jake Paul did this and to not want to financially support him because of that out of moral reasons. But with that said, I think the way he went about this just put him in such a vulnerable position. And I feel like his carelessness is even more inexcusable considering he went through and won a copyright based lawsuit in the past. From his experience with that, you would think he would know what to do to avoid putting himself in a position where he can get sued for copyright and lose. Unless because of his experience with that lawsuit, he actually thinks he's in the right. Now I don't have an experience in dealing with a lawsuit of that nature or dealing with law at all. Not a lawyer, only really know the basics of copyright in order to protect my own content. So maybe there's something I'm missing and maybe Ethan will win against Triller. If any of you guys are lawyers or know about law and can give me a legitimate case to why Ethan may be innocent, I would love to hear your insight in the comment section below. And if you know about law and think that Ethan will lose this lawsuit, I'm interested to hear what he would actually end up having to give to Triller. In the statement, it says $150,000 per stream, but I've also heard people online saying that it would be $50 per view, which if they're going by the podcast count would still be like $50 million. But if we're going by the views of the enlisted video, that would not be that much for Ethan. But then there's also the other extreme of Ethan potentially going to jail for five years. I personally can't see that happening, but if he did, that would be like insane. Not in a good way, but it would just be like crazy. Ethan is advocating for all of these accused YouTubers to be put in prison, like James Charles and rightfully so EDP445. So to see Ethan go to prison before any of them would just be so mind blowing. But again, I have no idea what the results of this lawsuit would look like. So if you guys could give some insight into that in the comment section below, I'd appreciate that. Speaking of insight, a lot of people, specifically Keemstar, have had quite a bit to say about this lawsuit. So in my next video, I will be covering all the reactions to this on Twitter. If you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe with notifications on. I'd also like to thank my channel members for supporting the channel, in particular Scrubby, who has donated $100 a month. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.